Here we are today with the notebook and in that notebook there are written a couple of questions which I'm going to ask Gwen today. It's a uphill to sit to level because it's really hard for me to just look at the cover and my neck is like sniffed. The questions are focused on the life as a foreigner in a different country. It's actually been like one year and a couple of months when Gwen arrived here to the Czech Republic. We started living together and I believe after one year everyone can have a kind of opinion of that other country you are living in. And today we are going to reveal the truth about life as a foreigner in Czech Republic. So it's like Miss Universe questions for me. <laughs> And I'm not worried because Filipinos are very good at Miss Universe QAs, Q&A, question and answer Persians. 7 times 8. 42? <laughs> Don't ask me about math because I'm very stupid at that. Okay, so what's the first question for me? You would not win the Miss Universe. Yeah, because Miss Universe is not all about math. It's all about self-reflection questions. Good. The first question is, what was your first thought after landing here in the Czech Republic? Or what was the feeling after you landed here? Honestly, I was only thinking about how can I get through the immigration? <laughs> because I was a first time traveler and it would be very hard for me. Like even asking questions to um, strangers and how can make things done like easily and properly if I would be passed through immigrations if I won't get offloaded offloaded. So that was the first thought that was the first thought I had when I first landed here in Czech Republic. But after I got to the immigration I had this kind of thought, what would be my life look like here after this day? Unlike the others who travel to other countries, especially to other Filipinos, they're always thinking about their family out there. How would, would it feel to be away from their family? But for me, it was the day of how can I get through all those immigration things. How would my life look like after this day? Like on this day that I came here? What would be the new things that I could experience? What could be the opportunities that I could receive? And I was really thinking about I want to be... It's a new country, new life, and I want to like achieve those goals that I had even when I was still in the Philippines. And as well as, um, how would my life look like with Cuba? Because we had a plan that time that we will settle here once I arrive here and I was really looking forward to it. And honestly, I was a bit, Nervous of what could happen if things will be successful if things will Go smoothly or if there will be a lot of challenges even if while I'm staying here because I'm away from my family And I don't have really a family support since my parents are deceased So I really I would say that I had myself alone only on those things Without my family what was your first thought when I came here? It's me interviewing you, not you interviewing me. <laughs> I had to ask a shit as well. But the quick answer, my feeling was like I was very happy and uh, all that stress was relieved, visa finally. Visa yeah. But there's still come, coming a lot of storms actually after getting the visa. That's true. Was it hard to get the visa to Europe? Oh my god. I think everyone knows how hard it is. And it's so crazy that the Philippine government is thinking that we are their enemy. We are Filipinos and our, they are also their enemy and they don't really allow us to go out of the country. And it's really crazy. And I think all people knew about it, even foreigners. Because I would say that we have the same struggles with the immigration thing, with the embassy things, with the requirements, and a lot of money was spent. And a lot of useless papers were made just to send like, imagine if I, we can show the picture of the papers we had, all the requirements we made that time. 
and it was really too much like piles of maybe thousands of papers were made just to send to the embassy and it was really hard actually very very hard especially i only had the iy i didn't have any supports from the center self alone and a lot of money were wasted as well the time because the some stupid things i made as well <laughs> but the visa processing is very very hard very hard for each one of us because even if you already got the visa still it's not guaranteed that you can fly out the country because there there are still challenges when you're out in the immigration they're gonna interview you even if you are you have complete papers but if they don't like you personally like the, the way just how you look or the way just how you answer their questions they will offload you and this is actually a cruel truth we spent around nine months of trying to get Gwen's visa, it was like, as she said, as you could see, bunch of papers, bunch of money, a lot of stress, a lot of sleepless nights. Once you will get all the requirements, and it can really happen once you are in the airport, there is some man or woman who will offload you yeah. without proper reason. And it happened to so many Filipinos who were trying to reach out to Europe or to the USA or to Australia anywhere it's just that i even knew one person that she was offloaded that's only because the immigration felt that this woman is very superior because the way she answered the questions were very confident like she's very confident about herself so the immigration officer offloaded her just because they don't like the way she answered the question so what I did, I knew about it, so I tried my best to be humble actually when I was answering and I let them feel that they're superior than me. <laughs> so they were happy about me and then they allowed me to fly out the country. Innocent Gwendy yeah. and the immigration. And I also didn't wear like uh, revealing clothes. I was only wearing pajamas, a simple t-shirt and slippers because it happened also many times to other Filipinos that they were wearing like classy outfits. Like for example, Paris outfits, they were wearing at immigration while they're still in Philippines and they get offloaded just because the immigration doesn't like the way she wore dresses. Yeah, that's crazy thing about the Philippines. Crazy thing. But lucky for us, yep. Gwen managed that. <laughs> because I'm a very witty person, just joking. Another question is, how does your daily life changed after you came here to Europe? I think I'm just gonna mention a few things. Taking a bath in the river. I'm not taking a bath in the river here anymore, but I do that in the Philippines. We don't have a bathroom. We don't have faucets. So we only rely water from the river, especially washing your dishes, washing your clothes, and taking a bath in the river. So another one is the transportation. I usually um, ride by a motorbike from my village up to the city and then from the city to school or to work by jeepney But here I can just ride by tram or bus Which those things are not in the Philippines. I mean the tram is not in the Philippines as well as the train in Cebu, Philippines Another thing I would say this is very funny, but um, In the Philippines, I usually take a bath in the morning, which I can actually do this here, but it's it just changed because of the weather that I don't know what I got scared more in water when I came here because it's very cold so I prefer washing or taking a bath at night so it will be easy for me to go to work in the morning especially of the time management as well in the Philippines I can just I don't know but it's just changed I don't know what happened like here in Europe I would say most of the people usually take a bath in the evening or before they are going to sleep so you just accepted that mindset <laughs> oh yeah because in the philippines we don't it's also different it's because we don't take a bath before we go to sleep and that's really what i cannot <laughs> understand imagine guys you are the whole day in the hot country sweating your ass <laughs> But we don't sweat in the I don't sweat. I don't have any smell. I don't sweat as well. So you are going home by the motorbike on the dusty road. There is dust all over your body. And what you will do, you will come home, eat dinner. And then with your dirty body, you will lay to your freshly washed bed sheets. So we have this half <laughs> bath in the Philippines. We call it half bath. Washing some armpit and some things in our body. 
before we go to sleep but we don't really wash our hair it's just that thing is should be in the morning like washing our entire body and all of us are doing that in the Philippines some like parts of the body basically what's the difference between full buff and half buff the half buff, half buff is only different in that you are not washing your head and then everything is the same <laughs> I don't know, but we call it half bath and we don't really consider it as full bath in full pins. And if you do that, we feel like we are dirty still because we should wash. I don't know, but that's really crazy how Filipinos are. It's strange, right? We have to move on. I have to stop Gwen talking because when she starts, it's impossible to shut her mouth. <laughs> so what's next? What was your What was your favorite travel experience here in Europe? My most favorite travel experience was way back in Greece. <laughs> it is my favorite maybe because uh, Greece is also slightly tropical country. Is it a tropical 100%? I would not say 100%, but the tropical about that thing, it's hot weather there, I would say. Yeah, and I felt home when I was in Greece. It's like there are things that are the same in the Philippines, especially about how chaotic the roads are. <laughs> like you could just drive and crazy thing. You don't need to wear helmets and those things are in the Philippines. And I can really see how people wear clothes and I can really see like I really love these things and I really miss it because if I will be in Europe, I should wear a jacket because I mean, if I will be here in Czech Republic, I should wear a jacket, trousers, even during spring because it's still cold. But there, it was in Greece, I feel like I was free. Um, that's crazy guys like once us as a foreigners will come to Asian country or to the Philippines and we can see that chaos on the streets everywhere we will get like scared feeling in danger everything and once Gwen can see all that chaos she will imagine like oh home yeah I was really like that well I really like this it's the same as in the Philippines like huh why are they not wearing helmet why are they driving crazily like it's so crazy in Greece that time and I really loved it uh, but actually that <laughs> kind of freedom which is connected with the chaos have some kind of magic itself but it's a magic like it feels amazing you don't you just don't care about the things you are just living freely yeah and before way back in the philippines i always um imagine about living like maybe coming to a cold country experiencing winter and experiencing how winter outfits would be like that's what really we filipinos are always thinking about experiencing snow and also the, how we wear the jackets or those things because we don't experience that except in baguio because it's colder than the other parts of the philippines but when i came here on the first day of winter no way i don't like it <laughs> I regret of telling it to myself before that I really want to experience those things because now I hate it so bad and I really I'm craving for a bad I mean I'm craving for a hot weather that's why I love Greece and it's so nice there do you think that you have personally grew since you came here to Europe um personally gross is there anything happens personally growth? Because I would say I'm always having personal growth even if I was in the moment. <laughs> I'm really confident about myself, right? I would say if I will define personal growth, personal growth always comes out with a lot of challenges or struggles in life. So when I was in the Philippines, life there was very hard for me. Like a lot of things, like even transportation is very hard, water, drinking, it's very hard. But when you come to a very easy place or easy situation, I think there's no personal growth that could happen. But I would say that the one thing that really helped me or one thing that really changed me for a personal growth is our marriage, our wedding. Yeah. In what way? In, what, in a way that... Um, being with a person 24 7 because i'm not that kind of a person who are with people 24 7 because i always want to be alone all the time even if i was with my family way back in the philippines but you know i was living in a different little house i was not with my siblings that time so i think that's the personal growth that i had it's like breaking barriers <laughs> breaking barriers accepting new environment that's the personal growth I think that I have right now. Amazing. 
yeah and also like really made me become more mature as a person like dealing with things by myself without without asking my family because in the philippines way back then when we were still in a relationship i was also uh, whenever i do some decisions in my life i always ask my family if it's correct or wrong but our marriage way back then i didn't ask for anyone for it i didn't ask permission from my family i didn't ask i didn't like ask anyone i just did it myself alone so i think that's the personal growth that i learned like it's all about maturing and making your own decisions and also especially uh, moving out here i didn't ask permission maybe i tell them but i didn't ask their agreements because in the philippines if you are a girl especially if you are younger whenever you have do tough decisions in life you should always seek from your family's decisions and you should always um if they don't agree with that you really can't do that uh, that's kind of crazy thing for me while listening to it like here in the Europe, as you can do anything you want, you don't have to ask permissions like those. Those things, when I could hear in the Philippines, as a, as a citizen of the Philippines, it's like you are chained. <laughs> according to others' decisions or approvals. But the thing what Gwen was mentioning earlier, the, the life here is easy, so there is not really like a personal growth. It's actually thing which came on my mind, like once you are in very comfort zone, you don't have to care about anything, you will just stay in your house, you have everything, water, food, clothes, anything. You don't have any needs to become a better person and you are just living and surviving. But once you will decide to leave that comfort zone, that's the moment when your personal growth starts, I would say. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not saying that living here became bad. It's just that I would say that I had more personal growth when I was in the Philippines than I am here, or maybe because my life is easier here and because I'm also relying from Cuba, so and my life became easier because he's with me. So maybe that's why. What is the most challenging part of living abroad oh here in gosh. Europe? <laughs> I would say the expectations. This is really I hate the most, especially if you're married to a foreigner, and especially if you're already living abroad, because all of them are always expecting that if you are have living with a foreigner, if you have a husband foreigner, if you're living abroad, automatically you have money. So it's really tough for me because sometimes I even think about deleting my Facebook, but I can't do that because I have my family that I communicate through Facebook. They don't know any other applications. They don't have Instagram, they don't have WhatsApp. So the only thing that I can communicate to them is through Messenger. It's just that's so crazy that I got a lot of requests from people, even if you're not close friends or even that they're just neighbors and they ask solicitations from me, donations of some things. And they even lied to me once, but I didn't give them just because I'm this kind of a person who's shy to say no, but at the same time, I don't do that. Like whenever if they ask me, I don't give them. It's just that I'm shy to say, I'm shy to refuse something. And it happened one time that I have this neighbor. He messaged me, hey, when, how are you like that? Um, you know what? We have this kind of feeding program to street kids in right now in our village and we need money for that. And I was, it took me one day to reply him. And I was really thinking about it. Should I give him like even a little money from it? Like feeding program for street kids and maybe it could help the kids but i told my sister you know what this person chatted me and my sister said no don't don't you ever believe that person it's because he was here yesterday asking if he can maybe sell his necklace because he needs money for his motorbike that's kind of unbelievable unbelievable attitude for me like imagine totally stranger will chat you after you are moved out from your country You've never heard of that person, you've never seen that person, and that person will ask you for money only because of that you are married to a foreigner. Yeah. Not all foreigners are rich. <laughs> but That's the other thing. There are a few Filipinos who are having that kind of mindset because it's always like when you refuse them, they're always disappointed of you. And you always end up being a bad person and you're greedy. That's how they think about you. And the thing what you will do, you will not care about it, just, okay? 
Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the simple thing. You do, will refuse them and that's all. You will forget it. You don't have to care about that. Maybe I seem like a mean person, but it's nothing wrong about it. But the Gwen is a very kind person. She would like, if she has everything, she will give it out to everyone who needs that. That's the best characteristic of Gwen. But you cannot give when you don't have. Well, if it's not useful for us, we're not gonna buy it. So we're saving for our future. But what people are thinking that you have, you are like a walking ATM machine. So I have this kind of thinking as well. It would be hard for us, especially if you will be in the Philippines, especially for Cuba. And right now we are still very thinking if we will live in our village or we will find some place. Because if we are in a village, expect there will be a lot of expectations from people, especially to my relatives and my family as well. Not giving anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very pressured about those. Thinking just about those, even if it's not happening yet, but I'm very pressured. I'm not even a little about pressured. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very pressured. I think every Filipina are experiencing the same. Can you imagine yourself settling down here in Europe, in Czech Republic, forever? To be honest, no. It's okay. Let's no, go to the it's Philippines. really no for me. Even if life here is very easy, like if even if you're sick, you can just go to the doctor easily, and the doctor will just help you, and then you can just they will give you like everything. I would say life here, everything you need is here. But I can't see myself living here forever, because I hate winter. <laughs> I don't like it very much. Like I'm. Every day I'm crying during winter, like, oh my god, when this thing could stop because I really can't take it anymore. It's too cold for me and I really can't. Like, I can't, I really can't. I'm sorry, baby, but I can't. Gwen is a liar. If you could see our previous videos, Gwen is playing in the snow. She's enjoying every moment when she's surrounded by the snow. So it's just OA. No, it's not. It's just 10 minutes of like being happy and after that I'm struggling with coldness. And if not settling here in Czech, where else? Maybe somewhere in Spain, somewhere in Greece. Like I would say hot countries, <laughs> I mean hot weather countries, but not in a cold countries, never, never. Because especially during winter, the clothes are very demanding. You have to wear so many layers and it's really hard for me and don't like it very much. Yeah, tough life. Yeah. In cold countries. But life here is easier. Life here is easier. So if you could, if you could compare the life here and in the Philippines. Oh my God, maybe Philippines is just far away from Czechia. Maybe. In what ways? Specify. Oh my God, I would say Philippines is one of the worst countries if we talk about healthcare system, government, transportation, <laughs> and. But it's not about those things. I can say the healthcare is very good in the Philippines. Like so many nurses which are working in the USA, for example, are Filipino nurses. Like the healthcare is good, I would say. The doctors are good. The only thing that people can afford those things. Yeah, that's, that's why problem. healthcare system is really All the important. services are working in the Philippines the same like here. You have doctors, you have transportation, you have post offices, you have malls, you have groceries, everything. But we don't the... have money there. Hmm? Money is very hard to find in the Philippines. You will never find money, you have to work for money. <laughs> but, you know, baby, eight hours of working in the Philippines is just 300 pesos. Hmm? And here it's different. Hourly is 200 check rounds and that's equivalent to 500 pesos. Yeah, that's really crazy. Like I hour. can say the prices of goods comparing here and in the Philippines is not really that different. And in, we can say the average salary here is 40,000 pesos per month. And in the Philippines it's six. <laughs> Teachers are even receiving 15,000 per month salary, private schools, even some of them are 8,000. And government teachers are 20,000. That's why teachers are not getting rich in the Philippines. They're struggling with money, they're, ha they're having a lot of debts. That's why I don't want to be a teacher in the Philippines. What do you want to be in the Philippines? I want to work something that I like. Good. With good salary. Mechanic? No. With me? No. Opening the <laughs> store? 
no. shop. And if we will talk about the things of the Philippines, what are the things you miss from the Philippines after coming here? Oh my god, I think I'm gonna state a lot of things. Okay, I'm gonna state a lot of things. State a lot of things. Okay, number one, I miss the dirty kitchen. I'm not sure guys if you know what is a dirty kitchen, but you can see that entirely in different parts of the Philippines, especially in the provinces area. And all my life since I was before I was born, we have this dirty kitchen. We don't have this electric, electrical something for cooking. Stove. We, don't, we don't have stove. We don't have electrical stoves. We don't have those stoves that can have gases. You can actually make it, but it's very expensive. So the cheapest way for us is to have a dirty kitchen. So we will just go to the forest and get some woods and cook our foods with the dirty kitchen. You are not cooking anyway, so you don't have to mind it. Yeah, I don't cook. It's my sister, but I'm the one getting woods in the forest. <laughs> equal. It's Gwen, equal job. Gwen is the muscle for dirty yeah. kitchen. I have so much muscle actually compared to my sister. Mm -hmm. Your muscles are playing hide <laughs> and seek. But yeah, I was always the one doing those things. Second one is riding with my motorbike. My motorbike? I don't have a motorbike. <laughs> Riding with a motorbike, I already miss it, especially the annoying drivers who's always like, why and drive with me? Because they know they always pay double because I don't like waiting. They don't go to my, it's like from the border of the city going to my village, it takes 20 minutes to ride by a motorbike and they don't go with one passenger only. It must be four passengers in one motorbike <laughs> because they don't get a profit out of from it as well. They, they're gonna have one passenger and the gas is very expensive and the effort of it as well the driving and it's also their job like already their job making money for their family they know me that i always pay twice because i don't really like waiting so there are drivers who are very annoying and all of them want me <laughs> to ride to them when is high demand <laughs> and I am also like missing the jeepneys, riding jeepneys. I really love it and I miss it so much, even if it's very traffic in the Philippines, but still, I really miss it. And I miss my family. I miss my nephews, my nieces. I miss being noisy. It's like I'm the most noisy one in the Philippines, in my family. And they're always like, I am like my mom because I always scold them, especially if they do something bad and I always scold them. It's not good like that, like that, do this in a way like this. <laughs> so that's how I miss like annoying my siblings and making strict, like pretending to be strict because I'm just pretending to be strict for them to be scared of me. And I would say I also miss taking a bath in the river, making a tabai. Here, I can take a bath in the river, it's just that you're not allowed to make a tabai. I'm gonna show you guys what is a tabai for me. But that's what we do in my village because we don't have faucets. So we do make tabai and we take a bath there. We spend time with neighbors, talking to them while washing clothes in the river. And that's how I miss a lot. I would say the vibes as well. I miss the video game with an eat all you can food with just 400 pesos. You can eat everything you want singing out loud with karaoke we are slowly approaching to the couple last questions of this interview yeah but before that for foreigners i know that you guys are aware of the karaoke in the philippines and you're it's it really sucks for you because in the philippines it's very noisy a lot of neighbors are singing those things but i think that's something that you cannot avoid in the philippines because that's already part of our culture earplugs <laughs> What's your general opinion about Czech Republic and Europe? I would say life here in Czechia is very easy. Like you can just get everything you need. The, the things, it's like you are being spoon feed of everything. You don't need to have struggles with transportation. Tram is just like every after five minutes in the Philippines, we have to wait for transportation because the jeepney is full. There are no motorbike drivers because they need four passengers and you cannot just drive. They cannot just drive in one passenger. So sometimes you're late of waiting, of transportation. 
So I would say life here is easier as well as like you guys have insurances and it's like mandatory here and that that became easier as well for people especially if they get get sick so they can just go to the hospital and just give their insurance but in the Philippines it's not mandatory and if you get insurances it's also very expensive because the salary is very cheap it's very low that's actually true everything is easy here we check people we cannot have any little reason to complain about life here we have everything literally if you work for it you have everything you guys would experience the life in the philippines maybe you would appreciate the life here in czechia and that's true that's what happened to me after i spent just a one month it's not a very long term period but only that one month made me realize that i'm living here like a very good life here in czech republic in europe i actually don't have any reason to complain about anything <laughs> And it changed me a lot and I started appreciating just the basic things, everyday things. And we are coming to the last question of today. <laughs> Describe Czech Republic and Europe by, the, by just the three words which will come on your mind first. No more stories, no more excessive talking of yours. Three words. I guess that's very difficult. I would say easy, security, and safety. That's nice, actually. <laughs> it's really hard when you are with a very talkative girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, the best couples always make those who are opposite. I am the one who is quiet and not that talkative. The woman will never shut her mouth. Mm -hmm. I am a tall, she is short, she's skinny, I'm fat. Mm -hmm. I am smart, she's dumb. Really? <laughs> eight times seven. The same. One, two, three. <laughs> Forty-eight. Yeah. Go, go for it, and you look, guys, how Filipinos multiplying. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Forty-eight. <laughs> Fifty-six. <laughs> I told you I'm not really good at math, but I'm really good at speaking. That's my strength, and mathematics is my weakness. <laughs> ending this whole <laughs> I'm so embarrassed so that's all for the Q&A portion <laughs> from Cuba huge portion yeah I hope you guys found something interesting from those questions or maybe even if it's not that very informative because it's all about self-reflection but there could be instances you can find something new or you can hear something new about the Philippines so it, it would be I would say this is also very helpful and you can also hear something about me personally, right? Yeah. You get to know Gwen better. Maybe it's my turn sometimes in the future. I cannot say I'm out myself. I would be the good interviewer. Mm -hmm. I could not have a podcast and do things like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. But the idea of this video was Gwen. Yeah, I and asked him to prepare some questions for me and I would like to answer these questions because I really like talking. Thank you so much guys for staying with us up until the end of the video. If you like this video, you can hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much for your support and see you again next time. Bye!